In this video, I'll be talking about the formula for conditional probability. And before we do that, I want to first um, try and help you understand what conditional probability is. So we're going to try and make the formula using maybe a, a diagram. Now, the first thing is um, I've, I've written this, and there's a P bracket A, and then this line here, and then B, and then close bracket. This is read as the probability of A given B, okay? So this is the notation used to say the probability of A given B has happened, okay? So let's use this Venn diagram here to help us understand what that might mean, okay? So probability of A given B has happened. So B needs to happen. That's what it looks like. So this circle here, this needs to happen. So this needs to happen, but then what would the probability of A be if this happens? Well, this is the intersection, and this is the part where um, we have A and we have B. This is the part where we have A, but when B actually doesn't happen. Okay, so this will not be included. This will be included. So it's, we're thinking about this bit here, and we are thinking about the two sections that make the entire B as well, so this and that. So we know that it sounds like this needs to be at the uh, bottom of the fraction. So probability of B needs to happen. And then after that, we need this at the top of the fraction. So the probability of A given B must be the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Okay, so this is actually equal to probability of A and B, so A intersection B over probability of B. Had I done it the other way around, so if I had written probability of B given A, this would be probability of, I can say A and B again, I don't need to say B and A because that's the same thing. So A and B. I could also have said probability of B intersection A, it wouldn't make a difference. And then, but this time, the denominator will be probability of A. Because this time, what we're looking for is probability of B given A has happened. So A needs to happen, and the probability of B after that would be this bit here, because this is the only bit left of B that can happen after A has happened. Okay, so this is the formula for conditional probability. Um, this is how we write it, and we're going to read that, the probability of A given B. Okay, you don't need to say this bit has happened, okay? And... Yes, I'm saying that this is the notation, so this line is what you're going to see to, to uh, denote that A given B. I want to continue to um, give you in abstract terms some examples, so you can try and understand it for many examples. Now, um, you do also need to be able to think about um, contextual examples and be able to interpret them in conditional probability. So here are four different Venn diagrams, and I want to sort of help you understand how this would work out. So if I want to find probability of A given B here, I need to do probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. So let's do that. So probability of A given B would be... So I'm using the formula here. So the intersection, so the, inter the probability for the in intersection is 0 0.1 here. So 0 0.1. And divided by the probability of B. Now the probability of B here is 0 0.5 because I would have to add these two. So that would be 0 0.5 here. And that you can see is 1 fifth. Okay. So that's that one. Now let's try and find probability of A given B for this one. So we have probability of A given B. That would be the probability of the intersection. Now, I don't have an intersection here, and therefore the probability of the intersection would be 0. So 0 at the top, divided by probability of B is 0 0.5. Now, 0 divided by anything is 0. So probability of A happening, given that B happens, is actually 0 because you can see that there's no overlap. A cannot happen if B has happened. Okay, there's just absolutely no chance, and we can see that in the Venn diagram. Let's look at this one. For this one, I'm going to swap it around. I'm going to look for probability of B given A. So probability of B given A. 
So I need to look for the intersection of A and B, or B and A. So the intersection of A and B, so that would mean A and B both need to happen. That's just this bit here. So this 0 0.5 is looking at uh, B happening and also A happening. Okay, so that's the intersection. So the intersection would be 0 0.5. And I need to divide it by the probability of A happening. So the probability of A happening is 0 0.7. 0 0.7. And that's because these two would be added together to get the probability of A. And that fraction is 5 over 7. Okay. And in this last one, okay, so what I've tried to do is give you a visual of you know, most of B overlapping with A with a little bit left here. Okay, and there's something outside here as well, so notice that. Okay, so I'm going to look at probability of B given A again. So probability of B given A. So that will be the probability of intersection for A and B. So that's 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 here. And I need to divide it by the probability of A. And the probability of A is 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. That's 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 is here. So that's also 5 over 7 for this question. Now, what I wanted to say is this. Notice how in these two questions, so let's look at this one first. The probability of B was 0 0.5, and the probability of B given A is 5 over 7. Now, 0 0.5 is a half, okay? And you can see that the probability of B given A is more than the probability of B, okay? That means that the two events, A and B, you can say are conditional because it changes the probability of B. So let me write down the probability of B here. So the probability of B is 0 0.5, which is equal to a half, okay? So notice 5 over 7 is different from a half. It's actually more than a half. So if A happens, it makes B more likely to happen because probability of B is a half, and if A has happened, we know probability of B is more likely. It's 5 over 7, okay? In this one, if I work out um, the probability of B, the probability of B here is 0 0.6. That's 6 tenths, okay? And again, 6 tenths is different from 5 over 7, okay? I can't easily know which one's higher, but so let me just work it out. So 5 divided by 7 is equal to 0 0.71, okay? So that's more than 6 tenths, which is 0 0.6. Okay, so again, in this one, uh, if A happens, it has made B more likely to happen, actually. Okay, so notice um, things like this uh, when we look at conditional probability. In, in, this, in these first ones, we're looking at uh, probability of A given B, okay? So probability of A is 0 0.4, okay? So let's write that down. So probability of A is 0 0.4. Now, 0 0.4 is actually 2 over 5, so I'll write 2 over 5. So probability of A is 0 0.4, 2 fifths, and probability of A given B is 1 fifth. So if B happens, A is less likely to happen. It's half as likely to happen, actually, because this probability of A was 2 fifths, but if we know B has happened, probability of A is only 1 fifth now. Okay, so notice that the probability of A has changed if B has happened. So this is what conditional probability really is all about. Now, I'm going to use the same idea to talk about independence, okay, and independent events. So the idea is, when we look at the probability of A compared to probability of A given B, you know, is it more or less likely to happen when we look at the A given B, okay? And we, we did the same here. We look at probability of B and probability of B given A, is it more or less likely to happen than the probability of B? Okay, and we're going to relate that to independence now. Let me remind you of how independent events work. So if event A and B are independent, then we have the probability of A intersection B equaling to the multiplication of the probability of A and probability of B. Okay, so probability of A times probability of B would be probability of intersection A and B if they are independent, okay? Now, I have um, a Venn diagram here, okay? And um, you can see that the A and B overlap. And what I want to do is I want to find the probability of A given B. So let's do that. So let's write out the formula. So probability of A given B, that will be equal to the probability of A intersection B 
divided by probability of B. Okay? Now, probability of A intersection B is 0 0.1, probability of B is 0 0.1 at 0 0.15. So let's write them out. So 0 0.1 here. 0 0.1 add 0 0.15 is 0 0.25. Okay, and let's uh, simplify this fraction. So if I multiply top and bottom by, um, let's say, 100, um, I will get 10 over 25. And 10 over 25 simplifies to 2 over 5. Okay? Now, I also want to say that the 2 over 5, notice, is equal to 0 0.4. But if we look back at our Venn diagram, notice that the probability of A was already 0 0.4. Okay, so probability of A is equal to 0 0.4. And probability of A given B is also equal to 0 0.4. We just worked that out. Okay, so we just worked that out here. That's 0 0.4. So the two of them are 0 0.4. Now, this is another way to identify that A and B are independent, okay? So, if we have probability of A given B the same as probability of A, then, pro the, then the events A and B are independent. Let me do it the other way around. So, let me say probability of B given probability of A. So, probability of B given A, that would be probability of B intersection A or A intersection B divided by probability of A. So the intersection is 0 0.1. Um, probability of A is 0 0.4, okay, and that is one quarter. And one quarter we know is 0 0.25. And notice that the probability of B is 0 0.1 at 0 0.15, which is also 0 0.25. So probability of B is equal to 0 0.25. So, main idea here is this. If the events A and B are independent, you will find that probability of A would be the same as probability of A given B. You will also find that probability of B given A is the same as probability of B. So, if event A and B are independent, then this is true. And also, also, the following are true, okay? So we can say that probability of A given B will equal to probability of A and probability of B given A would be equal to probability of B, okay? And the, uh, the intuition for that, if I was to say it in words, what I'm saying is B happening has not affected the probability of A. So probability of A was 0 0.4, and probability of A given B is still 0 0.4. So whether or not B happens, the probability of A will be 0 0.4. So that would mean that B does not affect A, and that means they're independent. Okay, so this is another thing we can say about independence. Now next, I'm going to talk about how to um, work with the formula. So we've actually got a couple of formulas now. So we've got the conditional probability formula. We've got the independence formula. We've also learned the addition um, formula, okay? And you can, use those, you can use all of those in different ways to set up equations and solve them for different scenarios. So we're going to be looking at that next. What I'm gonna show you here is some basic examples of setting up equations and rearranging to find what, we, what we're required to find. So I've, I've written out the formulas. Now, you are given probability of A given B is equal to 0 0.6, so we're given this part of the formula. And probability of B is equal to 0 0.1, so we're given that's 0 0.1. And we need to find probability of A intersection B. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute these values into the formula and then rearrange it. So if I substitute, I will get 0 0.6 is equal to probability of A intersection B. And then probability of B is 0 0.1, so write that down here. And then if I rearrange it, what I would do is I would multiply by 0 0.1 on both sides. So that would give me um, 0 0.6 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.06. And that will be equal to probability of A intersection B. Okay, and that's it. We've found it. In this example, prob uh, C and D are independent. Probability of C intersection D is equal to 0 0.18. 
and probability of A is 0 0.9. Find probability of B. So the independence, so I can use this formula. Um, the intersection is 0 0.18, so this will be 0 0.18. Probability of, okay, I should have said C here, C or D, so let's write that down. So this one is going to be D, the first one's going to be C. Okay, so C here and D here, so that was my mistake. So, and probability of C is 0 0.9, find probability of D. So uh, 0 0.18 here, uh, 0 0.9 here, and find probability of D. So let's do that. So it will be 0 0.18 is equal to 0 0.9 uh, times uh, probability of D. Okay? Now if I divide both sides by 0 0.9, um, so divide both sides by 0 0.9, what I will then get is 0 0.18, 0 0.18 over 0 0.9, and that will be equal to the probability of D. And I will write that on the other side. So that will be 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.9. That's 0 0.2. So this is 0 0.2. So the probability of D we've worked out is 0 0.2 uh, by setting up the equation and then rearranging. Uh, next, I'm going to give you a variety of questions to do. Okay, You have to do all of them, and you have to show all you're working out for them. Now, here are your questions. So the first one is that you're given a Venn diagram, you need to find the, the probability of A given B. Then using your answer to part A, state whether or not A and B are independent. Second one, you're given a couple of these probabilities and you need to draw a Venn diagram for A and B. So something that will look like this with all the probabilities. And number three, you are given some probabilities and you need to find the probability of A.